Portland's Alternative, it's 94.3 WCYY. Good evening to you, friends. It's Mark hanging out with you. And uh, what a special time this is right now. You know, every now and then we get to have some friends call up or drunk listeners. But this is a special opportunity. Get someone on the phone right now that I know you've seen in countless TV shows, countless movies. Let me just run down a few. We got a name drop here over the years. Well, of course, the Pitch Perfect series. You heard his voice in, in Planes, the fire and rescue movie. Uh, you get to, you know, We Bought a Zoo and Bad Teacher and the Dewey Cox story, Walk Hard. What else? You got Bicentennial Man, the, the Late Shift, and of course, that Christopher Guest trilogy there, Mighty Wind and Best in Show, and uh, for your consideration. On the line right now, super talented, super funny, John Michael Higgins. Hello. Hi, Mark. Nice to talk with you. Although I have to tell you, uh, I am drunk right now. I am. I, I really am one of your drunk listeners. So you are a drunk listener. You can put, you just put, you can just include me in that pile. Good. Right now, where I am. That's what we got the the dump button for here, John. We uh, just the, we got a four second delay button. So uh, let it fly. You know. Okay. Hey, hey, let me throw this to you real quick. Just going down. I mean, just a fraction of a portion of. This awesome resume you've got here. What's the, when someone comes up to you off the street out of nowhere? What's the, what's the one people say? Oh, I loved you, and or or they'll quote something. What's what's the one that usually sticks out the most? Well, it's odd, you know, because I, I I'm really a character guy, so I never really know what it's going to be. And I do I I have, I have as you say a long resume, and I, I I see someone on the street, and I see in their eyes that they're clocking me they recognize me and i'm like what's <laughs> this one going to be you know and I, I you know there's a couple of big big ones that always i uh, uh, best in show for some reason is a big one uh, yeah. still yeah uh and uh I, I they like that character you know i was the gay shih tzu handler guy Correct. in that and they just like him they, yeah. uh, there's something about him that they like and that, that's the best i could figure it out like why that one yeah. Um, and then I used to get a lot for uh, I did a uh, I did the breakup. The strange it was a romantic comedy with uh, yep. Ben Swan and Jennifer Aniston, and and I uh, I did a very sort of a big sort of tour de forcey comedic scene in that, which gets imitated a lot apparently by at college campuses and uh, <laughs> you know. So if for some reason there there's a cult aspect to that one, which I did not see coming. Gotcha. And um, and that will happen in a you know in a grocery store line, and they'll they'll turn to me and they'll say, you know, there's Gary on the kick drum, which is apparently something I said. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a big one, and um, you know, and the Letterman thing, I guess. From of course, of course. Well, listen, we're we're kind of like you're kind of coming to the area, sort of. You're going to be in Portsmouth over the weekend down there for the New Hampshire Film Festival. It's the fifteenth year. I've been to a bunch of these down there, and they do it. Uh, they do it so well. Friends, get online and find out more about it at nhfilmfestival dot com. We'll tell you a little bit more how you can maybe catch up and see uh, John down there for that. Hey, you were you were born in Boston. You grew up and went to college down there as well, too. Do you still have family in the in the Commonwealth? Do you get to visit New England much? I, I visit New England every year, actually. Um, I, I believe uh, the organizers of the film festival uh, called me because they saw me in Tamarscotta, Maine, okay. this summer, uh, where I go every summer. So I go up there, and, and uh, I went to college uh, in Mass in, in, uh, in uh, Amherst. And, and so I really consider, and I was born in Boston. I was, but my dad was in the Navy. Yep. But, uh, but I, uh, I consider the Northeast my home. I mean, uh, spiritually, if, if that means anything. But, uh, sure. you know, I, I feel like I belong to that part of the country. Yeah. And um, I always have, even though I've been in California for 20 years or something like that. And was in New York before that. We're a different breed up here, aren't we? Very much so. Br- brutal Very honesty, much so. yeah. Well, listen, it was just announced uh, Pitch Perfect 3. Just saw some kind of little teaser trail for it. Any word or anything you could say? You're going to be a part of this one? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, Universal will contact everybody when they figure out the deals. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> I hope I am. But, yeah. Uh, you know, you can you can never rely on anything like that. I hope so. It's been really fun doing those. Anna, of course, is from she's from Portland, Maine. You know, none of us ever get to see her or anything, but whatever. We'll we'll work on that sometime. But you know, John, I see I see these singing movies and these dance off movies, and I'm like, I'm like, really? Like, are these like are people? These go over well, and they are, and I'm blown away. But then I realized, I go, wait a minute. When I was younger, many, 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 many years ago, we had, you know, (laughs) dancing battle movies like Beat Street and Footloose. Yeah. So I guess this kind of makes sense. People really love these Pitch Perfect movies. They do, and it it came as a surprise, I think, to everybody, including Universal. Uh, I I think, you know, that script had been 
knocking around town for years. And then I think what happened is they were saying, look, you know, acapella is over. We had the voice off or whatever it was on TV and, and it came and went and blah, blah, blah. And, and, um, and, you know, Liz uh, Banks and her husband and Gold Circle Films just said, no, we still believe in this. They got it made and it just crushed. And I think you're right. There's something people will always enjoy watching people perform and be in groups, frankly, uh, is, is a big part of Pitch Perfect. It's not a single performer. It's not the Selena Gomez movie. You know, it's a, right. <laughs> it's a movie about people who have to be together to make it work. And I think that's what people respond to, the sort of fraternity, the sorority aspect of yeah. Pitch Perfect. It's, it's a big draw for people. Yeah, you, know, you just like to see the whole world come together and have a dance-off and, yeah. and a Coke and a smile or something, you know? You... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We could all come together and just dance it all off, like you know, West Side Story, and we all start doing a cha cha or something. I don't know, but yeah, and there's not you know one jet and one shark. There's a bunch of them. Absolutely, so that's, <laughs> yeah, many, many sharks. John Michael Higgins on the phone with us right now. Uh, you know, from so many movies, so many TV shows, and that leads me to one question I was going to ask you was. Is there something, I'm sure you enjoy both of them, is there something you enjoy or feel more comfortable doing? Is it TV or film? Is there less pressure with one more than the other where TV sometimes maybe is on a deadline to go live to tape or has a little bit more of an urgency where with a movie it's a little bit more at the director's speed? Well, first of all, the, the, the real answer to the question is a two-part answer. Number one, I prefer stage to both of them uh, yep. put together. Because that's really what I am. That's how I was trained, and that's the way I always think of myself as a stage actor. I haven't been able to do it very much because now I have a family and I can't afford to do stage. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I. Uh, um, but as far as film or television, I actually prefer television only for one reason, which is that they go fast. Yeah, there's no time to mess around, and uh, usually I'm often on films, particularly comedy. Uh, I don't think the extra time buys you any extra laughs. More spent time spent fiddling with a light in a scene in the living room is not going to get you more laughs. <laughs> it's going to probably get you fewer laughs because the, now the audience is distracted by the visuals, and that's not where the ball game is. And uh, it's great for drama, yeah. With where you're really trying to build atmosphere and all that stuff. For comedy, you know, it, you really need two folding chairs, and that's it. Yeah. And uh, mm. uh, so, in a way, for comedy, I prefer television. For drama, I would prefer film. You know, and since you started doing acting, I mean, each day uh, something new is coming out with technology or a way to reach people. What's, what's your kind of take on, you know, with social media now? And anybody can be uh, a star, John. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're super talented or good. But with a YouTube or something, everybody can get clicks. Does it water down the potential for great new stars and characters? Or does it uh, throw, like, fake leads to us? Do you see uh, technology and social media? Is it helping to bring out new characters or is it kind of waterlogging things down well it's a bit of both i, I my feeling about the social media is, oh, well number one people will always be attracted to great characters with rich stories and no matter where or how they're platformed whether it's on a phone or on, in a movie theater i think the phone tends to flatten the material out uh you know the social the uh, the digital version uh you know social media and internet and stuff they're more like burnt matches. You know, they burn brightly for a second and then they die. And uh, I feel like a film, a good comedic film or a good comedic television show is more like, well, a candle where it will keep going. Yeah. Somehow keep burning inside you somewhere because you recognize yourself there. It wasn't just a quick effect that's sort of poking at a pleasure center and then it goes away. You know, I, I none of that appeals to me much as a performer or as a viewer, that type of entertainment where it's just preying on surface reactions from me you know it's very easy to make someone cry you hit them <laughs> but it's to make someone cry because they're concerned about the complications engaged by the character is a very difficult thing to do and when you can do that it's unforgettable for the person watching it yeah. but you know pulling your pants down to get a laugh will always get a laugh don't get me wrong i'll yeah. do it myself <laughs> But I know when I'm pro as the pants are going down around my knees, I'm thinking this is not going to last, and I better have something good on the other end, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> they will forget this and this laugh. They will forget that they even laughed. That's how cheap this is. Well put. 
John Michael Higgins is on the phone with us. His pants are on securely, I believe. Right? Are we... More or less. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, I'm drunk. I am completely <laughs> Who knows what's going on over there right now? Uh, the New Hampshire Film Festival kicks off today, and it runs through the weekend. NHFilmFestival.com for more details on that. And, again, we'll let you know just in a minute here where you can uh, maybe bump in and, uh, to John and, and see one of his panels. I know I might get old, John, but let's talk quick about your run with the Christopher Guest movies. I mean, these are just people love these movies. Best in show. Mighty win for your consideration and hopefully another soon. It's kind of one of those we, we, we don't budge on it. We just, if it happens, it happens. And when we get it, we, we love it forever. I'm, I'm a believer that it takes a special type of person to do those movies. And the casts are always amazing. Why do you enjoy making those movies so much? What's your personal pleasure working with those, with those actors and, and doing those films? Well, um, I tell you, well, thanks for the compliment. I uh, appreciate it. I feel the same way about them. Um, we were actually filming one as I speak, like yesterday I was filming it. Oh, what great uh, news. One, which is great, yeah, but, you know, because they come in frequently. You know, yeah. He only makes one every few years, you know, yep. uh, 10 years, meaning. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they're, yeah. they're infrequent, but, you know, it's a very, it is a very special project. It's very unusual in our culture to have a repertory company. The theaters can no longer afford them. Films never really got into them, unless you're looking at uh, Orson Welles' people, or John Cassavetti's people, or, you know what I mean? There's just a few where he's using the same people over and over. As Christopher says, I well, I can't speak for him entirely, but he said it many times to me, Christopher Guest is, um, the only reason he uses the same people is because they can do this weird standing backflip that he's asking them to do, which is, <laughs> there's no script, it's a treatment, and it doesn't have dialogue in it. And so, we have there's so much that is required of the performer. So many directors call themselves actors directors, and he's the only one I really know who puts his money where his mouth is, which is to give the actor responsibility. Yeah. That's the innovation here. It's not that the director understands acting or understands actors. It's that Chris says the actor is the expert here, hmm. and that is really unusual. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that is the that's his innovation, and that's why the the audience can feel it. They know it. They know it's different, and they know they recognize that that in a way the performers have been put into a real situation. They are in danger themselves. They don't know what's coming next. Yeah. They don't know if they're about to be funny or not funny. They don't know what the other guy's going to say. Yeah. All that tension really works on the audience, and it makes for wonderful comedy. For Cassavetes, it made for great drama. For Chris Guest, it makes for great comedy. It's all that, ex- ex- it's the excitement that is generated by that tension of not knowing, you know, and, wow. uh, and it's a great, great honor and a luxury to be included in that group. Oh, man, I can't imagine what it must be like to be around filming those movies and the fun you guys have and the talent there off camera as well as what you're filming, how much, how much fun and laughter must be. Uh, that's that's got to be a... That's going to be something really special. It's great. For me, John, those films are, the, the, I mean, those are just all-time classics. I still got to say, though, for me, uh, for you, for your catalog, uh, The Late Shift is still up there for me. Just all around, just the whole movie itself, the cast that was in it. Uh, I mean, I, I really feel like you, uh, that that movie was you. You stole that. Your your portrayal of David Letterman. I mean, I, okay, Kathy Bates did a pretty good job. Okay, all right. But, you know, <laughs> she was okay. She, she uh, but but uh, you were fantastic in that. How tough was it to make that film? Were you dealing with a lot of politics at that time and power trips that just uh, uh, were trying to shut you down or, or keep things from rolling? I know it came from the book, but I got to think there was still some headaches maybe making that movie. Oh, plenty. Yeah. You know, I was uh, I was a stage actor in New York at the time they cast me. I really was not familiar with Hollywood or how it worked or anything. Or, and I probably didn't handle it very well. I did as best I could. But really, making the movie was hard enough where you're imitating a, a living person that the viewer can literally flip back and forth on the television, you know, dial to see how you're doing. You know, when he's he's like three three stage or three channels away from me. While I'm while I'm imitating him, usually when you're imitating somebody, it's you know Theodore Roosevelt. And the audience is, you know, it's their best guess. But um, so as an actor, it was not a, the easiest project to do. And then the attendant hoopla was something that I was not ready for, did not expect. I don't know why I didn't expect it, but I just what didn't. And you know, uh, my treatment from the hands of the people who were portrayed in the movie was, uh, you know, tricky to negotiate, uh, which is a nice way of saying it, 
And, you know, it's funny because that's my memories of that movie. It's just how difficult it was to ride the crazy bucking bronco of the media attention. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, it did, it, it immediately made me well known in Hollywood. Unfortunately, as some kind of impersonator, strangely, and, and it was hard to get jobs where, you know, I, I remember TV executives, producers would bring me to the TV executives and say, this guy is great. And they would say, uh, we don't have, what are we going to do with a, an impersonator? You know, we don't need Rich Little. And I'm like, when did I become Rich Little? I mean, it was a very strange moment in my yeah. career. But it all worked out, and I'm really very proud of the film. It was much better than I, than I could have imagined. I, I thought it was, I agree with you. I thought it was, it's a really good film, I mean, by any standard. It's just a lot of fun to watch. It's very interesting. Oh, what a story. Yeah. And for those out there, of course, it's it's the story of uh, when Johnny Carson stepped away in the battle for, for late night. It's uh, sometimes not as uh, e- easy to find these days, but if you find a copy, buy, just buy it flat out. It's uh, That is a hell of a story, and what a great cast in that one. Um, John Michael Higgins is going to be in the area down the road in Portsmouth, New Hampshire this weekend. Uh, actually, starting today, the New Hampshire Film Festival runs through Sunday. Uh, it's a great event, folks. I've been there uh, many years. I was there last year and had a blast. So many great films debuting that are local and national films as well, featuring people like Winona Ryder and Al Pacino, Ryan Reynolds, and the big debut of this movie called The Witch. John is going to be there uh, tomorrow on Friday from 1 to one thirty for a uh, press meet and greet. It's open to the public. That's going to be at the uh, Discover Portsmouth Center. And then on Saturday, uh, I was at this last year. It was a lot of fun, uh, the comedy panel. It's happening from 11 to noon. That's on Saturday, and that's at the Discovery uh, Portsmouth Center as well, too. Uh, good uh, local comedian Justin McKinney is a part of that as well. You can find out all the details, get your passes, and uh, get to this thing, friends. If you're a movie fan, uh, you, you're really going to be amazed at how well they put this thing together and how many great films are there. NHFilmFestival.com is the deal there. Well, John... I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a movie buff. I love comedy. I love good comedy. And uh, I grew up, uh, when I was very young, I grew up around a lot of older people in, in, in the Boston area as well, too, where I was was born. So I, I saw a lot of Gleason and Jack Benny and then eventually Don Rickles and the whole roast comedian world when I was a very young kid. And as I got older, I really appreciated just great funny people uh, that can just kill it at any time, anywhere, like a Steve Martin and Martin Short and the late, great Phil Hartman. And I, I really feel you're someone who's in that department. You know, uh, you're dead on every time. And it's really easy to see why people like you and everything you do. You bring something every time that uh, people really appreciate and get a great laugh at. And uh, we really appreciate the time with you talking with us here. Thank you very much, Mark. Those are really nice words. And I hope uh, your listeners can come out and check out the film festival. I know it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Very interesting people are uh, speaking and some very interesting films because I've been watching them. I have to judge a few of them are uh, yeah. are really very much worth seeing. So uh, come on out and watch. And if you see me, Come up to me. I'm not. I don't bite, and I'm always happy to talk to anybody who wants to talk about movies. That's great to hear, John. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it.